Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week. Welcome Raghav. Welcome members. Hi Jainil. Hi Kuldeep. Good to see you. Uh, Nico. Nice to see so many uh, students in this class, everyone. We are looking at IELTS speaking part one, and I'm going to talk about how to get that smooth band nine. Um, the lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. And for the general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. That's general IELTS.com on both of those uh, websites. We have loads of materials for you, videos, original practice exams. We have apps for those uh, websites, of course. And you have some free speaking with other students. So I'll show you that really quickly. Um, this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment. Uh, for lifetime access. We are British Council um, Registration uh, Center and uh, certified agents. Uh, and if you log in, you can create a free account, by the way. Uh, you can try it for free by clicking this green button. And then uh, once you log in to your My Student account, uh, then in your My Student account, you're going to see a lot of Great materials, computer-based practice exams, etc. Um, and then you see this, uh, let me just slide that over, yeah. There, you see that student partner uh, speaking. And then when you click on that student partner speaking on the website, uh, then you will have a chance to uh, find other users on this page. And then uh, you can video an audio chat with them. I'm the one in here right now, but usually you'll find lots of other people in here as well, okay? And it's the same for the general IELTS. The general IELTS is the green background. Again, you can click that big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access, so check it out. Um, all right, if you have questions, uh, send me an email. My email is adrian at aehelp.com. Any questions about IELTS or products, I'll be happy to answer. Welcome, Rajveer. Hi, Natalie. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Rajveer. Um, yeah, I've, I'm using a different setup. You noticed. Yeah, Rajveer said it's better video quality today. Um, yeah, I'm using a much higher performance system, and I'm going to keep improving it, so it's going to get even faster and better, Rajveer. So thank you for noticing. That's good feedback. I was wondering if somebody would catch that. Um, all right. So uh, we have classes uh, all week, uh, all the way until Saturday. Um, today we have speaking. Tomorrow we'll have writing and listening, and then uh, we will have a Q&A session on Saturday for members. Um, and then uh, from May 5th, um, we're going to have a new schedule coming. So I'll inform everybody about that over the course of this week. But we will have a new schedule for the live classes. It will basically be the same schedule that it was before uh, when I was over in Europe. So um, yeah, so that's exciting. All right. Okay, yeah, no, good. So several people are noticing the video quality is better. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, all right, everyone. So this is speaking. Yeah, it's kind of you get to really experience more this time. Um, so it is speaking. So this is a speaking class. So don't just listen to me. That's good. It's a good start for speaking. You have to listen. Uh, but definitely speak and uh, repeat. I'm just going to do a plus sign there instead of a slash. Uh, so speak repeat okay uh, it's super important that you practice your speaking in these classes so just copy what i say copy my intonation copy my pronunciation copy my um my 
uh, enunciation. So as much as you can, if you catch some new words, uh, write them down. You don't have to write them down now. You can revisit this video later, watch it again, and then uh, copy out the new words, okay? All right, I'm glad I'm getting all that great feedback about video quality. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm using a Canon RP uh, this time. It's a higher caliber camera and system. Um, all right, so um, I'll give you some tips on what to do in your speaking exam, but I really want you to just warm up right now and start speaking. So we're going to uh, go through the typical introductory icebreaker questions. Uh, you will arrive to your IELTS exam hopefully an hour before your speaking test. Find someone uh, who is there, practice your English with them, talk to them, be confident. It's a great way to build your confidence before the interview to find another candidate and uh, ask and answer some questions, take some speaking questions with you. And then 20 minutes before your speaking exam, you will have to complete your registration. Make sure you take your ID, make sure you take your passport with you. Use English. Sometimes uh, people are using their own language in the registration room. Um, try to ignore that. Really try to stick to English. And then, um, of course, 20 minutes after, at your given time, uh, you will be uh, asked to go to the uh, interview room. And you will sit face-to-face -face, uh, with an examiner. These days, because of COVID, often with a mask on. So make sure to practice with a mask before your speaking exam, okay? Uh, wear your mask um, at least an hour before you go into your speaking, which you will if you show up an hour early. So you get your breathing used to wearing the mask. And then you will be uh, met by the examiner. Um, could be a native speaker, could be a non-native speaker with really advanced English. And then they will begin the interview and they will be sitting down, they will greet you and they will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner. This is candidate number 347521. The exam is currently uh, being conducted in Dubai at uh, 1400 hours. Um, and now we shall begin. First question always, uh, may I see your identification? So it's here, but that's the first question because if you don't have your ID, even you used it for registration, they will ask you again. So may I see your uh, identification? And you have to prove the identification or they will just simply stop the interview there. Okay. Hi, Eugene. All right. Um, so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. So may I see your identification before your exam practice several different ways to respond to this question. Um, Kaldeep says, sure. Um, Kaldeep, I would do more just so that you immediately get into your fluency and show your fluency. Um, by saying sure, the examiner's kind of like, oh, is this going to be a band five or a band nine? Who knows? Okay. Uh, Brian, here you have is not correct English. Here you go is correct. Okay. So not here you have, here you go. Uh, Sean says, sure, here it is. Please have a look. Um, I'll hold it for a moment. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that, Sean. You do have to hold it. They won't take it from you because of COVID. They'll ask you to show them the ID. Okay. Uh, Kaldeep says, here's my passport that I used for registration um, for my exam. Charmin says, my pleasure. This is my passport that I used to register. Please take a look. Very nice. Uh, Janiel says, yes, of course, here it is. Please take a look. That's good, Janiel. So um, simple, but still fluent, right? Here, yes, of course, please take a look. Okay, it's still nice and fluent. Rajveer says, certainly, here's my passport that I used to register for this exam a couple of weeks back. Please take a look. Very nice and original. Um, you want to show diction. That's a really good sign of a high band score. Um, for the IELTS or an expert level speaker when you don't just speak English, but you even have diction. Does everybody know what diction means? The word diction. That's what you want to aim for when you're going to those band eight, band nines. Okay.
Okay. So, um, yeah, when you're very good in a language, then you have um, a very clear diction, which means a unique and original style of speaking. Okay. Yeah, so Sean says it's an intonation and style that's unique, and even your word choice is unique to you. It's your style of speaking, okay? All right, so that's what you want to do, okay? And examiners will pick up whether or not you have diction, uh, even just from these first few questions. So yes, uh, certainly. Here it is. Uh, please take a look. Um, I used uh, my passport to register for this exam a couple of weeks back. Uh, if uh, you need me to hold it closer, just let me know. Okay, I purposefully did that, let me know. Okay, so here we go. Um, here's an original uh, sentence with kind of my style of diction or my style of attitude as well. Uh, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Yes, certainly, here it is. Please take a look. I used my passport to register for this exam a couple of weeks back. If you need me to hold it closer, just let me know. Okay, uh, try to repeat this after me. We really just kind of smash <laughs> these words together in natural English. So just let me know. Just let me know. Okay, just let me know. One more time. May I see your identification? Yes, certainly. Here it is. Please take a look. I used my passport to register for this exam a couple of weeks back. If you need me to hold it closer, just let me know. All right. Okay, cool. So let's keep going. Uh, next question, of course, is they're going to ask you for your name. So now that you have your ID, you can stay, you can sit the exam. And then, of course, the next question is, uh, what is your full name? Okay. So give your full name exactly the same way as it is in your passport. Otherwise, they're going to look at you really strange or strangely. All right, 99B Gamer says, my last name is Shreshtha and my first name is Kshiti, Kshitij, uh, but you can call me by my nickname, Anmol. All right, Anmol, yeah, I would definitely would. I have trouble pronouncing both your uh, first and last name, so. All right, but that's good. That's a good answer. Uh, Navneet says, my full name is Navneet Kaur, but please call me by my first name, Navneet. Okay, Navneet, that, that works. Okay, uh, not with my first name, by my first name, Navni, by my first name, okay. Viral Gotti says, my name is Viral Ramesh B. Gotti, please call me uh, by my first name, Viral, okay, or Viral, Viral maybe, instead of Viral. Uh, Dar Darshan says, my full name is Darshan Raishura, uh, you can address me as Darshan. Um, Darshan, I wouldn't use the you can address me because... In this case, the examiner has seniority. It's okay to say you can address me. Usually, we use that when we are in a higher position than the person we're speaking to. So, um, my name is Adrian. I'm going to be the manager. Uh, I'm going to be your manager in the company. You can address me as Mr. Adrian. Okay, that would be an example of you can address me as in many contexts. Okay. So one more time, when you use that form, it's like, hi, welcome to your new job. My name is Adrian. I'm going to be your manager. Please report to me. If you have any questions, you can address me as Mr. Adrian. Okay? So like that. All right? Uh, but in the IELTS, I would say stay away from it. So Azam says, my full name is Azam Khan. Uh, call me uh, Azmi. Yeah, um, Azam, I would actually in that case say my full name is Azam Khan, as you can see in my passport. Please call me by my nickname, Azmi. Okay? So, my name is Azam Khan, as you can also see in my passport. Uh, please call me by my nickname. 
Azmi. Okay, so that's that's how I would do it because Azmi is clearly a nickname. So um, repeat after me. What is your full name? My name is Azam Khan, as you can also see in my passport. Please call me by my nickname, Azmi. Okay, Azmi. Uh, for part one, I will ask you some more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, do you work or study? Very, very common question. I believe they asked me this as well. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure. They asked me this in my speaking exam also. Uh, so really practice this one. Never get bored of it. Um, always sound like you're excited about this. Uh, just give me one second here, everyone. New system. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, just a moment. I'll fix it. Okay. So here we go. Still working out the bugs on this new system, but we'll get there. Okay. Two moments. I'll get us back on the screen. Not as exciting of a background anymore as uh, the baby picture. Okay. All right. So back we are. No worries. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got some good answers coming up. Jai Neal says, I both work and study. I've been working as a technical illustrator at Expert Global since 2019 and studying English for this exam. so that I can continue my further education abroad. Okay, Janiel, that's a good answer. Uh, just a couple of recommendations. So um, I do both work and study. Instead of the do, I, I think you're doing that to emphasize, but I think it's more, it's smoother and more natural to just say I both work and study. Okay, and definitely contract the I have been. So I've been, I've been, when you have the been with the I have, it's very clear that you're using present perfect, even if you contract the I have to I've. So I've been working as a technical illustrator at Expert Global since 2019. Okay. All right. Let's see some more answers. Uh, Rashika says, currently, I am both an employee and a student. I have been working as a nursing assistant for one year, and I'm learning English to get the required marks for the IELTS exam uh, to join the workforce as a registered nurse ab uh, abroad. I can't see the rest of that, Rashika, but that's a very good answer. Okay, it's nice and clean and accurate. All right. Sean says, presently, I both work part-time as a waiter at a coffee shop near my home five days a week and uh, study IELTS for my master's in biomedical engineering in the UK uh, starting later this year. Okay, good. Yeah, that's great. All right. Uh, Shakvir Singh says, I'm a student. I've just completed my senior secondary education, and now my wish is to go abroad. So I'm preparing um, my documents, including uh, the IELTS exam. Okay, good. So that works as well. All right, right on. Okay. Um, let's take a couple more for this one. Uh, again, show lots of fluency here, students. So... Uh, Charmin uh, says, well, I'm a full-time doctor and currently I'm working as an emergency medical officer at a private clinic in Central Dhaka Division, as well as I'm studying for my post-graduation in medicine. Okay, very good. Nice. That works. All right. 
Uh, Rajveer says, I've been working as a software engineer in a multinational company for the last seven years. In parallel, I'm also studying IELTS for immigration purposes. Yeah, very good. So there are some nice words that you can use if you're doing both. So um, currently, I'm uh, both <clears throat> working as a part-time lecturer at college uh, teaching introduction uh, to psychology uh, for um, first year students and simultaneously I am also uh, brushing up on my English skills and learning for this IELTS exam uh, so that I can continue uh, my PhD uh, later this year in the States. Okay. All right. Great. So uh, I'm taking uh, a little bit from uh, what a few of you have said and giving you some nice vocabulary and um, uh, even an idiom here uh, to use when you're answering this question. Okay. So here's again the question. Just repeat after me. Do you work or study? Okay. Currently, I'm both working as part-time lecturer at college, teaching introduction to psychology for first-year students, and simultaneously, I'm also brushing up on my English skills and learning for this IELTS exam so that I can continue my PhD later this year in the States. Okay, so a couple of points to pay attention to. The use of correlative conjunctions really makes communication sound more professional. So both working and learning, okay? So you see that use of both working and learning, okay? Uh, that's called a correlative conjunction. Again, that's very, very useful. And of course, uh, whenever you can use a little bit of a phrasal verb or a simple idiom to enhance your lexical resource, like brushing up on, uh, does anybody know what brushing up on means in this case? So um, brushing up on, and then here's another vocabulary simultaneously. Rajveer used in parallel. These are the same, okay? So uh, I'm teaching uh, psychology for first year students and simultaneously means at the same time in parallel means at the same time okay all right brushing up on improving um, is close preparing joel is close uh, rahul says working on um, rahul says sharpening the skills uh, rajveer says revising Cl uh, yeah so um close yeah enhancing um yeah brushing up actually means um if you want the more specific answer for this so brushing up on yeah some good guesses students brushing up on means improving and relearning, reviewing, okay? So that's the sense of this idiom, brushing up on. Um, with idioms, it's good to be visual. So uh, just imagine something that's old and then you're brushing up on it, meaning you're moving your brush, okay? Sorry, guys, my camera is bugging out here a little bit. Again, it's a new system. I'm just testing this out. So I'm going to figure out why that keeps happening uh, to it, but... Uh, for now, you'll just have to bear with me while I reset it. Um, and uh, meanwhile, um, I'll jump to the next question, which is what will you do after this exam? So give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for that one. What will you do after this exam? Just give me one moment. I'll reset this camera one more time. Try a different port for this. Let's do it this way. Okay, 
just a moment. And do your best to answer this question while I'm doing a little bit of resetting here. All right. Okay, hopefully this will give us a little bit more juice. Okay, so yeah, so usually in the exam, they'll ask you like um, two, uh, maybe three of these uh, warm up questions. Okay. Let me just check this out. Okay, that's not going to work. All right. Okay. We'll get this sorted. Just give me a second. All right. And here we go. Okay. All right, just bear with me here. I appreciate your patience. Okay. All right, there we go. So let's take those off. All right, okay, back we are. <laughs> okay, um, so let's see what we have here. I see lots of great answers uh, coming up. Okay. All right, so Galtham says, I'm planning to uh, take my entrance exam in Germany. Oh, one more time. All right, give me one more second. I'm going to try something completely different. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do this one more time. It's a much more powerful full energy source that I'm using right now. Let's see if this will work. And if this is good, then problem solved again. Uh, thank you for your patience. I'm trying a new system here today, so we'll see. All right. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, Prithvi Yaish, he says, firstly, I will visit my friend's apartment because yesterday we had decided to travel to a nearby temple together. Furthermore, there's a birthday party where I will attend. Um, it's my girlfriend's B-Day. Okay, uh, Prithvi, uh, not bad. Just watch your grammar um, there, okay? So you've got a few awkward use of the past tense so be careful about that okay all right uh rajveer says after this exam i'm planning to relax and watch some comedy web series i have been feeling a bit exhausted uh, due to this exam preparation mostly i will binge watch the big bang theory for a couple of days as cinemas are closed these days okay um yeah so that's a good answer it's nice and fluent absolutely okay sadesh says um maybe i'm off topic but do you get study material if you register for the computer-based exam 
similar to the paper-based exam. Uh, Sadesh, I, I think that's a question there. Uh, the speaking uh, is the exact same for both the uh, the paper and the computer-based is done face-to-face. -face. If you're asking about our websites, then um, we have uh, computer-based exams as well as paper-based exams on our website when you register for the uh, premium course, absolutely. Okay, I'm not sure which one you were asking about there. All right, um, so again, the question we're looking at right now is what will you do after this exam? So you want to give a nice, full, fluent answer, okay? All right. Uh, by fluent, think about answer, explanation, example. Santiago Pinzon says, Sincerely, I plan to take a little break as I have been studying hard for this IELTS and ICFES uh, standardized test um, that are taken by all 11th graders in my country. Okay, that's no knowledge, Santiago, so it's a little bit of an awkward answer, um, but it's not bad. Okay, so uh, following this test, I plan to uh, chill out at home and eat uh, a delicious meal. Most likely, I will order a... Um, yeah. Hawaiian uh, pizza because I will be exhausted uh, both mentally and uh, physically so I do not want to uh, bother with cooking and cleaning then I will kick back and watch a sci-fi uh, flick and zone out. All right. Uh, so here is my response. Uh, again, repeat after me. So what will you do after the exa this exam? One more time. Uh, what will you do after this exam? Following this test, I plan to chill out at home and eat a delicious meal. Most likely, I will order a Hawaiian pizza because I will be exhausted both mentally and physically, so I do not want to bother with cooking and cleaning. Then I will kick back and watch a sci-fi flick and zone out. Okay, so again, I'm using uh, lots of uh, different um, types of vocabulary after this exam, following this test, okay? want to do that as uh, quickly as possible with these simple questions where you're paraphrasing key elements of the question. So what will you do after this exam following this test? Okay, that's a nice paraphrase. I plan to chill out at home and eat a delicious meal. Most likely, I will order a Hawaiian pizza. So notice how here I don't just say pizza, but I describe the pizza. If you like pepperoni pizza, fine, meat lovers, okay but definitely use adjectives. So be descriptive with your language, okay? Right, um, now the examiner will introduce the topic. So let's talk about your exercise. Now pay attention, it's not just exercise, but it's your exercise. So it's dealing with you. And even if you don't like to exercise, you need to just pretend that you do and give some clear and um, fluent answers, okay? So if you don't exercise often, pretend that you do. Pretend like you like jogging, doing yoga, playing football, cricket, all those different types of athletics, okay? You want to be fluent and you want to use vocabulary. So please, please, please don't say, oh, I don't exercise, I just sit on my couch and eat potato chips all day. Uh, it's a conversation killer. Don't be a conversation killer in the aisles, okay? Uh, they will not switch topics. It doesn't happen, all right? So uh, let's get into this uh, first one here. Um, how often uh, do you exercise? So give me a nice, fluent answer for this one. How often do you exercise? Okay. All right. 
Uh, Charmin says, well, as I'm a doctor, I have to rush to my clinic to see my patients and I have to maintain all of the outdoor emergency patients. So uh, I will certainly be very busy uh, after this exam. I think, Charmin, you're answering the previous question. Um, okay, Janiel says, uh, I work out daily for about 30 to 45 minutes in the early morning uh, so I can stay mentally and physically not stay well genial but stay fit uh, i usually do 20 minutes of running and then 10 to 15 push-ups and uh, other exercises finish that sentence genial other exercises okay classic says um although exercise is an imperative part of life at the same time i do not get uh, much, uh, quality time due to my chores to do this. Ergo, I take part in football on the weekends. Okay. Not bad. Classic careful. Uh, make sure you're speaking, not just writing. So put it all together. Okay. Ash says I have been working out since 2019. So I do exercise time. Akash, that's a really good start. I love how you're using quantitative language since 2019, twice a day, half an hour. It's giving me lots of clear information. Quantitative language is really good, especially when you have this how often. Maybe give me a little bit more fluency and tell me what kind of exercise you do. Okay. So 15 minutes of stretching followed by 20 minutes of weight lifting. All right. So go into detail, students. This is where you can show your diction again as well. Okay. All right. So Prathamesh says, I often do exercise, uh, mostly six days. Exercise is a crucial part of my everyday routine. Yeah, don't generalize, Prathamesh. So um, exercise is a crucial part of uh, my everyday routine. Okay, always bring part one back to yourself. Santiago says, well, it's not usual for me to exercise on a daily basis, but recently I've been thinking of taking up jogging once a day practicing basketball with my friends. Uh, Santiago, uh, if I may give you advice from my personal life, um, running every day, it's really hard on the knees and back, especially if you're at my age, um, over 35, let's just say that. Um, so I would recommend running every two days and something else like swimming or weight training every other day. Okay. So how often do you do exercise? Um, I exercise quite regularly, uh, at least four to five times each week. I go running every other day and I mix uh, yoga, weight training, and swimming on days when I'm not out for a jog. Uh, just this morning, I ran an 8K um, in about 40 minutes along the beach near my home. Okay, so answer, explain, example, quantitative language, Definitely an asset, definitely a benefit to get those higher band scores. Uh, here we go. So how often do you exercise? Again, repeat after me. So I exercise quite regularly, at least four to five times each week. I go running every other day and I mix yoga, weight training and swimming on days when I'm not out for a jog. Uh, just this morning, I ran an 8K in about 40 minutes along the beach near my home. Okay. Not out for a job, <laughs> for a jog. Um, so uh, 
Take a note of this interesting uh, phrase here, every other day. Every other day means basically every two days. So if I go running on Monday, then I'll go running on Wednesday, and then I'll go running on Friday, and then I'll go running on Sunday. So that's kind of the every other day. Okay, practice that. These kinds of expressions will help you to have original diction. Okay. All right. Um, next question. What is your favorite place to do exercise? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So what is your favorite place to do exercise? Answer, explain, example. Okay, answer, explain, example. Miyuki says, I love hiking and swimming since I live in Hawaii. I can probably to maintain uh, my health, especially my immune system or autoimmune system. It's that kind of vocabulary, Miyuki, that will get you the band scores. So my immune system, okay? Not just my health, but my immune system. Because, of course, a strong immune system will help you fend off uh, pathogens such as COVID-19. All right, Classic says, there are a plethora of athletic sites available in my home. Located near my house is the one where I find my feet. Okay, Classic, a little bit awkward. Careful not to use too many of these catchy uh, words uh, from online videos. Uh, plethora is overused these days. Um, Gotti says to talk about my favorite place for exercise, my terrace uh, palace nowadays outside my home uh, due to this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Janiel says, well, my favorite spot to do a workout is my house's patio. As I've just mentioned about what kind of exercises I do, I set up some equipment and a treadmill on my big balcony. So I feel um, that it's a fresh environment and I f uh, breathe more uh, oxygen as my balcony is less up on the 10th floor. Okay, so a little bit more detail there, John Neal, but that's definitely fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's see some more here. Let's take one more. So... Shakan Shaab says there's a park just 200 meters from my home where I go to jog and I've also um, signed up for membership uh, at a gym about two clicks from my home. I enjoy going to both of these places for working out. Shakan, good. I made a couple of corrections there, Shakan. Uh, notice the favorite place to do exercise. Uh, you have to kind of include that, okay? So I love working out at the local gym uh, near my home. It's called uh, Red Gym, and it is just a short five minute walk, uh, door to door. The owner and people there are uh, very friendly and the place has all of the modern equipment I need to get a full body workout. I was just there yesterday uh, doing an upper body regiment. All right. So uh, here we go. Again, answer, explain, specific example. Repeat after me. What is your favorite place to do exercise? I love working out at the local gym near my home. It's called Red Gym and it is just a short five minute walk door to door. The owner and people there are really very friendly and the place has all of the modern equipment I need to get a full body workout. I was just there yesterday doing an upper body regimen.
fantastic. Lots of original words, lots of detail, an explanation of why it's my favorite place, quantitative language of how close it is to my home, lots of detail, and an example. I was just there yesterday doing an upper body regimen or an upper body workout, okay? All right, uh, next question. Let's keep rolling. Everybody's doing such a great job. And again, I'll give you feedback. If I didn't catch you for the previous questions, don't give up. I always try to catch different students. Of course, I do pay a little bit more attention to our members because they're easier to see. Their name is in green. Um, and uh, of course, they support us, so we support them back. But hey, I try to split it up fairly, uh, so keep going, okay? Uh, next question. Can you improve your health more? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So how can you improve your health more? Thank you, Arpit. Okay. D. Nickname says, there are lots of exercises I can do to improve my health. Um, well, I thought of doing exercise even more regularly, a half an hour of running and with a bit of diet, uh, maybe less sugar. I have a sweet tooth. Um, I can lose a bit more weight and be even more fit. Okay. Nickname. Good. Nickname. Make sure that you are staying in the first person, me, my, I, the whole way. Okay. Juan says, in order to improve health, aside from exercising, it's key to have a good diet and eat different kinds of food. Last month, I tried tofu, and I'm planning to eat more of it instead of meat. Very good, Juan. Tofu's great. There's some really delicious tofu out there. So uh, if you start deep frying the tofu, it's not as healthy anymore, <laughs> but it's very delicious. All right, Kuldeep says, I think I can do more health by at home these days due to the pandemic and doing some workouts at home also as well uh, drinking orange juice every morning should boost my vitamin c and uh, enhance my immune system uh, during these challenging times yeah so orange juice very good lots of uh, great uh, vitamins specifically vitamin c and it's great for the uh, immune system okay uh, Begzod is asking a question, how can I improve my pronunciation? Uh, Begzod, pronunciation is not that important for the IELTS exam, nor is it that important for English in the sense that there are thousands of different accents in English around the world. Uh, English is very global, so I wouldn't worry too much about accents, but what you do what you can do, Begzod, is uh, focus on phonetics. Uh, do a lot of enunciation practice where you slow your language and really pronounce the th, s, r, all the key uh, syllables and words. And you can check the phonetics of words and phonetics exercises by just simply typing phonetics into Google. Okay, so English phonetics and start your pronunciation from there. Um, there is uh, an app as well. We worked with them in the past. It's called Elsa Speak. Elsa Speak. They specialize in pronunciation. Okay, so check that out. Tao Hidur uh, responds to this question. To make my body even healthier, I would need to um, build muscle in any person. I would need to eat a bit more protein to build muscle, and I've started to eat more meat and fish uh, since last week. Okay, very good. Uh, Talidur. Yeah. So, in order uh, to enhance my level of uh, physical fitness even further, I would like to um, put on some more muscle mass and cut my body fat even more. Uh, to do this, I will add more time in the gym, uh, lifting heavier uh, weights, as well as uh, I will 
drink uh, protein shakes daily and to cut body fat I will do more cardio exercises like hitting the treadmill or the um, rowing machine. All right, uh, just thinking of some new words to give you along the way uh, while I respond to this question. So here we go. Uh, repeat after me. How can you improve your health more in order to enhance my level of physical fitness even further? I would like to put on some more muscle mass and cut my body fat even more uh, to do this i will add uh, greater time in the gym lifting heavier weights as well i will drink protein shakes daily to cut my body fat. i will uh, do an extra 20 minutes of cardio exercises like hitting the treadmill uh, and the rowing machine okay so notice what i did there uh, i wrote it down but while i was reading i realized that i used the word more too often so i adjusted vocabulary i made it more quantitative and less repetitive as well that's something that you want to do at home when you're practicing your speaking record your answers on your mobile phone listen back to them and say the answers again don't make too many changes unless the answer is really terrible, but try to stick with the same or similar kind of answer. Just refine your answer by adding more detail, um, reducing the redundancy of words, paraphrasing more. That's really useful and that's a very good exercise to do, okay? Um, cardio exercises are exercises for the circulatory system, for the heart. Cardiovascular is the full cardiovascular exercises. Um, notice how uh, I use this word here, muscle mass. Muscle mass is your actual chunky, kind of bigger muscles that you build on your body. Um, you cut body fat. Okay, notice this of the verb cut in this context. So you cut your body fat. Sounds kind of bizarre, but that's the way it's used. Okay. Um, I don't really recommend drinking too many protein shakes unless you really do go to the gym and you need that. I'm just using that as an example, okay? It's better to eat more uh, fish and eggs. Go the natural way if possible. All right. Okay, uh, so next question. When do you exercise and why? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So when do you exercise and why? Here, of course, the examiner is specifically looking for a time. So when do you exercise and why? Okay. Sadesh says, I generally work out in the morning around 7 a.m. I feel that in the early mornings, um, the air is fresher, there's more oxygen uh, from the trees, less smog from cars, uh, and that helps me to stay fresh throughout my regiment. Uh, very nice, Sadesh. I love how you reflected the word regiment that I used earlier. Very good. Uh, Cigar says, normally the morning time is good for exercise for me, and I do it at that time on the weekends because in the morning, um, the surroundings are very peaceful, and most of the people like the atmosphere. Mm -hmm, very good. Okay, nice answer. Kaldeep says, usually I do exercise in the early mornings before 6 a.m. as this is the only time that's perfect for me to work out. After that, I have to get ready for my college classes and unluckily the bus arrives very early at my hometown. <laughs> All right, Kaldeep. Um, you know what they say, early bird catches the worm. So, very good. Jassy says, in order to hit the gym, I often opt for the morning times from 7 to 9, as this is not only great for wiping out early morning laziness, but it's also recommended by a lot of experts. Jassy, a lot, not a lot, a lot, two words, okay, a lot of experts. All right. I enjoy... Um, 
working out early in the mornings between 6 and 7 a.m. as I feel fresh and full of energy. Usually the air is clean or cleaner at that time because um, the morning traffic hasn't started up yet. <coughs> Excuse me. I went for a refreshing jog this morning at uh, 6 a.m. what I mentioned at the start of the interview. Making a connection, okay? All right. So here we go. Um, the question is, when do you exercise? Uh, just repeat after me. Uh, when do you exercise? I enjoy working out early in the mornings between 6 and 7 a.m. as I feel fresh and full of energy. Usually the air is cleaner at that time because the morning traffic hasn't started up yet. I went for a refreshing jog this morning at 6 a.m., what I mentioned at the start of the interview. Okay, so making some connections. All right, students, I'm going to stop there for today. Thank you for your patience with those um, technical hiccups. Uh, again, I'm using some new equipment here. Uh, it sounds like um, many of you are thinking it's it's better. <laughs> Charmin says video is blurry, <laughs> but I think it's better than before. So um, we're going to keep working on it. We're going to keep making it better and better and better uh, for all of you so that you enjoy the experience as much as possible. For HD videos that are pre-recorded with um, very high-end gear, uh, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS. Saswati, you are very, very welcome. On both of those websites, again, you can practice your speaking with other IELTS students uh, for uh, free, okay? All right. Um, you're very welcome, Rashika. Thanks for the feedback, Viral Gatti. Um, have a lovely uh, rest of your day. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria on the west coast of Canada. Much love to all of you. Bye for now. <laughs>